Have you been looking at Hack the Box VIP subscription, but unsure if you get value for money? Well, today we're going to try and answer that question. Hi and welcome to the channel. If you're new here, please consider subscribing and ringing the bell so you don't miss any future video. So I've been using Hack the Box for several years now and I've only just upgraded to the VIP subscription and it's something that I wish I would have done a long time ago as I've instantly found a lot of value with it. So we're going to do a quick review to see the VIP benefits and if you can justify the money on it. But first I want to give a quick overview of Hack the Box for those who haven't used it before. So Hack the Box was released around the start of 2018 and has since grown to be quite a large and reputable training ground for penetration testers. The site has quite a lot of offerings, but what's, what it's mainly used for is the hackable machines. And these are machines that are deliberately vulnerable to attack, and you basically have to find out how to attack it and how to gain system level privileges on that machine. They also have a few other offerings like the challenges, which are kind of short little topic centered challenges. And these can be in the areas of web, cryptography, open source intelligence, and much more. And then there's Endgame and Fortress, which are more involved CTF style scenarios and take place on a vulnerable network, not just a vulnerable machine. And it's also worth mentioning that they have pro labs as well. These aren't included in the VIP subscription, but I will be getting access to one of the pro labs quite soon. So stay, stay tuned for that review. So everything I've mentioned so far, apart from the pro labs, are free for every user of the site to use. So what do you get with the VIP subscription then? Well, with the site's popularity, there's been a lot of people attacking the machines all at one time. And this can lead to interruptions, slow connections, resets, and accidentally revealing clues left by other users. This can obviously be frustrating and it really breaks your workflow. And this is where VIP comes in. VIP gives you access to the VIP VPN, which has far less people on it. In my experience, the public VPN has up to about 100 users on it at one time, while the VIP VPN only has about 20. Also, a very recent addition to this site is the Release Arena. This provides users with a dedicated instance of the most recently released machine. Hack the Box tend to release machines on a weekly basis. This dedicated instance can only be accessed by you, which will further reduce the pains from sharing a server. The second most valuable feature is access to the retired machines. Machines are only active on Hack the Box for a few months before they're retired, and this is to provide ongoing challenges for the users to maintain their rank by attacking new machines. However, the retired machines can still be a great learning experience even though they don't award any points. And this is especially useful for people studying for the PTP, the OSCP, or the OSCE. Additionally, solutions are made available for VIP users of the retired machines. So if you're stuck, you can learn what you've missed and move forward. A quick note with solutions though is leave these to a last resort as if you use too often, you tend to rely on them too heavily and you don't really learn. So make sure you incorporate what you missed into your workflow moving forward. Lastly, you have access to the retired challenges too. I think the cost for Hack the Box VIP is quite reasonable at £10 per month or £100 per year. When you compare this against something like the PWK Lab Pass for the OSCP, you're looking at 369 US dollars per month, which is more than 10 US dollars a day. However, it's not exactly fair to compare these. A more fair comparison would be Try Hack Me, which is priced at £8 per month with no yearly subscription. So that's about £96 per year, which makes it a tad bit cheaper than Hack the Box. And while Vulnhub is a completely free service, you don't exactly get the convenience that comes with Hack the Box. So onto my pros and cons of Hack the Box. Obviously, I love the convenience of just being able to start and stop machines and have my own dedicated instance for the weekly release. Also, there's just such a vast number of machines on lots of different operating systems. So Windows, Linux, Solaris, BSD, I think even Android. So there's always a new challenge to take on. The VIP servers as well give a relatively interruption free experience. I really like how this site is somewhat gamified and continues to give you points as you move through machines. And the refresh user interface 
provides a nice modern welcome change when it's officially released. However, nothing's perfect and Hacklebox is no exception. Over the past month, I've had some stability issues with the Australian VIP server and I've had to switch back to the European VIP server, which is a little bit of an inconvenience when having to get a new connection pack and get a new IP address. From time to time, I find the website performance can be a little bit slow, especially when pulling back the full list of retired machines, often request just time out. So a bit of an improvement to website performance will go a long way. And lastly, some machines on Hack the Box are just pretty crap. So to answer the question that we started with, should you give this a try? I definitely think so. It's only £10 for one month where you can try it out, and if it's something that you think you would use on an ongoing basis, then you can buy the yearly subscription. I think in most places you'll be able to put this on your end of year tax bill anyway, so the cost to you is quite minimal. Anyway, I hope you found this review helpful. Please give it a like if it did, as it helps other people find the content that you're after. Be sure to let me know your experiences in the comment section below, or if you have any questions, I'll happily answer any of those. Anyway, stay tuned for my ProLab review, I'll be getting access to that shortly, and after I've had a little bit of time with it, then I'll write up and publish a review. But until then, I'll see you in the next one.